Hello everyone and welcome to part three. Um, now this by far has not been my most popular video series. Um, I can understand why though, it's very different to everything that I've done on my channel before. But regular viewers will be pleased to know that this series is nearly over, but I know a lot of people that are really enjoying this and hopefully some new users to the channel, some, you know, sound people that are into this kind of stuff will, uh, will stumble across these videos and check them out. Anyway, as you guys know, the rack is pretty much done and all tested, but I didn't have a crossover, so let's talk crossovers. On my desk here, I got delivery of it today. Today is Friday, so I believe it's, I'm, I wanna say it's like nearly two weeks since I started this project now, but anyway, here I have something very unusual. This is a Tannoy TX2 system controller, or it's you know more commonly known as, it's basically a crossover, a fixed point crossover designed for Tannoy speaker systems. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Tannoy, they're a very high-end make, very high-end company, um, and they don't really have any off-the-shelf products to buy, I don't think. It's all phone up and get a quote, and you know they mainly do installations and stuff. So I was very lucky to get this, um, but it probably won't be the unit that I'll be using in the final project. Now, let me explain how I got this. I went on to eBay to look for a uh, another crossover when that bloke went on holiday with the DBX crossover. That's on its way now. Now, by the way, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and I, I clicked buy it now on another DBX unit second hand, but the guy phoned me up and he was like, sorry, we recently sold that in store on the weekend. So he phoned me up straight away. As soon as I bought the item, even before I paid for the crossover, I had a phone call and I was like, hello, who the hell is this, you know? Um, and he was such a nice guy and he offered me this. And this is actually a much, much better quality unit than the DBX unit. The DBX is sort of like a, a very good quality consumer off the shelf unit sort of pro audio type thing but this is an actual component that you can only get your hands on if you're doing a tannoy installation so that's really cool um, now of course it's not ideal for this project and let me explain why firstly I need to research about it online but guaranteed there's not a lot of info about this online absolute guaranteed if I google tx2 system controller then I doubt much will come up at all but um, there's a couple of downsides. Obviously this is designed with a certain range of Tannoy products in mind, so I don't know where the crossover point is. You know, it's gonna be somewhere normal, it's gonna be somewhere around 100 hertz, 120 hertz, 90 hertz, something like that, but I don't know where the crossover point is. I also don't know if it's got a curve to it, or or what, basically. Um, the only controls on the front is a sub bass button on and off, which I assume just turns the subs on and off, um, or it could be like a really low frequency on and off, so it could be anywhere between 40 and 50 hertz on and off, I'm not sure. And then it's got um, a dB uh, pot for the sub bass. Um, no other options, it's just got a power light there. And if we look at the back, it's very basic. We have an IC input there. Over here we have your two left and right inputs, and my camera thinks they're faces, it's doing the facial detection thing. Um, yeah, you have your two left and right inputs there, and then you just have left and right high outputs, and then you have your mono sub out. Now, most professional two-way systems, you know, where you've got subs and tops, they are mono subs, um, but I was going to run stereo subs in, in this box just to make wiring and stuff easier, um, but the amp does have a mono switch on it, so whatever goes into input A will come out of both speak on connectors, so that's absolutely fine, and this should sum both inputs into the mono sub output, so that's absolutely fine, I'll just take the left um, patch going into the amp and stick it in there for now um, but I don't think I'll be using this for very long guys this is just a for now type thing because the DBX unit should be getting collected from the seller today um, it won't surprise me if we get some more troubles with it um, and I might just have to cancel the whole transaction but I may get my hands on the DBX so even though this may sound better because the DBX has got much more settings on it that I can tweak I can tweak the crossover points for both channels and I can tweak the gain for both tops and subs and I can uh, tweak the input and the output and stuff like that it just makes life a little bit easier than this because this has got no settings at all and um, the cool thing about the DBX is if I wanted to take my rack and use it for something else I can actually change settings on the crossover to pretty much make the tops full range or whatever if I wanted to use it without subs but still take the rack and stuff so yeah this hasn't really got that so um, this kind of limits you but it's a very very good quality unit if I plug it into my system and it sounds absolutely 
gorgeous, then I'll probably keep it and sell the DBX. But I really, really doubt that's going to happen um, because this is very specific to a Tannoy system. And, you know, they, they, they're all, you know, pre-designed and engineered and stuff so I'm going to need a little bit more flexibility. Okay guys I have just been more and more excited by this crossover um, because I've just read the manual and yeah believe it or not all the functionality I kind of want is available just with that button so let me explain how this works I've just read the manual and it's really interesting basically if the sub base LED is on if it's red what this does is it sends everything above 100 hertz to the tops and everything below 100 hertz to the mono sub output. So in my case, both my subs. If I do this and it's just powered on but the sub base section is not on, it sends full range out to the tops. So my top amp would be getting full range. So if I wanted to use just my tops and I turned up at a gig, all I'd do to get full range in my tops is press that button and boom, there's no longer a crossover, which is actually awesome. And because um, it's at 100 hertz, when I press that, there'll be shelved 100 hertz straight, subs are getting uh, 100 hertz and below. That's actually ideal, and this is just the, you know, I'd keep that at zero, obviously, well, I guess, um, or maybe even roll it back a bit, depending on, on the base response with the NU6000. I haven't tested it yet, as you guys know. So this is actually a really capable unit, even though there's no controls on it. Um, and I kind of thought, you don't really need separate volumes for your... Um, separate channels and stuff it's kind of pointless so I'm actually very excited to try this out and because it's such a quality it's such a good quality piece of kit I think it should sound really nice um, so yeah I'm really excited let's wire it in first thing I need to do is find a kettle lead it didn't come with a kettle lead so I need to find a kettle lead that'll fit there and I'll route it back and then we'll put this back lid on and we'll wire it all in at the front should be awesome and boom just like that we've got power for the crossover I've uh, fed the lead to the front as well as I can and now it's time to um, basically get the last component of the rack in and finally have this complete and uh, I will be including a test in this video. So there we have it guys, we have right and left going in from the uh, straight from the patch panel, so that's mixer in. Then we have right and left going out to the NU3000 for tops or full range. And then we have the mono um, left going into channel A of the NU6000 which has been switched to mono mode which should imply that anything coming into channel A will come out of both channel A and B. Uh, I've zippered this spare patch lead um, just in case I ever use a stereo crossover. Well, if I don't like this, then I'll be using the DBX and that'll be, uh, that'll be stereo bins. So, all that's left to do now is to drop it into the rack and screw it in. I've already got these in place. I just need to find some bolts and also power is all done, as you guys can see. Very, very pleased. So we have one top speaker plugged into channel A and I have it in full range mode as you guys can see and if I turn it up it is definitely full range. But the magic is guys if I press this button which should put it into crossover mode I lose all my low end which is awesome. Okay, so see if you can listen out for the difference. I'm gonna put it back into full range mode. So that definitely works. Now all I'm gonna do, just for sake of experiment, is plug in the speaker to channel B just to make sure channel B is working on the crossover oh come on left hand is so useless here we go channel B so now if we put up channel B on the amplifier and we put up our music and let's check the crossover
it's working perfectly. Now what I'm going to do guys is very gently experiment with the NU6000. Um, I know these aren't subs, but let's just see what it gives out uh, when it's not in crossover mode and when it is. So I'm looking forward. So guys, I didn't get anything out of uh, the NU6000, but I do have now on channel B, I've got full sub out which is great on channel B um, when I took the amp out of mono mode and it's coming out of channel B so that tells me I've plugged the wrong cable into the back of the crossover I knew my labelling was dodgy so all I'm going to have to do is um, whip the crossover back out and swap those sub outputs and then I should get mono output on both channel A and B so guys I have it working perfectly that's in mono mode and if I swap hang on a sec, so sorry about the camera work if I get this and I put that in the low output of channel B. So this is the other sub in theory. You can hear the low end there as well. Now the only odd thing about this amp that is kind of weird is in mono mode. I don't know if this is true for all amps or what, um, but I used a Mackie amp um, for bins. And when it was in mono mode, one input, channel A, sent the input signal to both outputs, which is exactly what this amp is doing. However, both volume knobs controlled each individual sub. Um, but with this one, this one volume knob is controlling A and B, which is quite interesting. Um, but yeah, it is scarily powerful, and of course this is a top speaker, so I don't want to go uh, bursting any tweeters or whatever. Not that the tweeter's actually getting anything because of the built-in crossover in the speaker and that crossover, so... It's actually just shaking the cabinet about, but it's actually not, not too bad of a low end. It is actually quite effective. And of course if we turn sub bass off, for some reason, we still get low end, which is quite interesting because um, this crossover, it does cross over as you guys heard, but the, I guess it's kind of cool really. If you plug in, if you have it off like so, um, you'll still get low end even though you're getting full range through the tops. So if you're using a massive pair of tops, like a 15 inch pair of tops with your subs or whatever and you wanted to give them full range you could still get sound out your subs, you just use the crossover like this. So yeah, anyway, um, loads of rambling. I'm kind of, I don't quite know what I think about this volume knob scenario yet because it would be kind of cool to see all four glowing, um, you know, with their, with their meters and stuff. But yeah, that's how it goes. Both outputs are working and that's all I'm concerned about. Um, so I can put this sub back in the rack and I'll give you guys a closer look of how it looks. Well guys, there it is. After a bit of a squeeze, I got it in. It's kind of lucky actually that this is not a like full size crossover unit so you know it only comes to there and there um, because there's, it's getting quite tight in the back now the main thing that's taking up all the space is those speaker cables that I didn't trim down and I'm starting to think with the strain and stuff on the cables that I really should have trimmed those down so I might do that at a later stage what I'll probably do is at the stage where I'm changing that 13 amp plug and socket I will probably trim down those speaker cables which will be quite a bit more work on this rack again but what I can do is take it on the road now and see how it holds up um, with my speakers and whatnot. So I'm really excited. Looking forward to using this Tannoy crossover. I think I'm going to leave it in here even when the DBX arrives because it's such a nice unit. That mono sub thing, I'm getting used to the idea now that both my subwoofers are just going to be on there. But it's nice that both the outputs work. Um, which is of course my main priority. Funnily enough guys, I think tonight, lucky this crossover arrived, I think tonight is uh, gonna be my first use of this rack. Now I'm not gonna be using it as a full two-way system rack, I'm probably just gonna be using the top amplifier for a couple of monitor speakers. So they'll be full range monitors, wedges on stage I believe, I got a gig in Cardiff in the Millennium Center in one of the back rooms. Um, I'll be using the KV2 Audio Active rig for out front. So, you know, very nice quality stuff. And um, I need an extra monitor amplifier, so I'll be taking this rack and giving uh, the NU3000 to go on monitors um, because I believe the boxes are, are about 300 watts RMS at 8 ohms. So uh, that's ideal for this amp. So this will be sort of wasted space, but yeah, I guess, I guess it's kind of ideal if there's a monitoring setup with... Um, 
you know, like drummers often have um, a bin underneath their wedge these days. And, you know, this could really, really drive a bin nice and hard. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to using this rack. Um, so what I'll do, I know I've given it a little test in here with my one 12 inch speaker. But what we'll do is later I'll hopefully get some footage on my phone of the gig and how well it's doing for monitors, which would be great. Um, I may not end up using it, but I think I will. So if you don't see any gig footage, then... Um, then I didn't end up using it. Um, so that's it for this week, guys. Basically, over the weekend, I may record some footage of the modifications that I'm going to do to these speakers. Um, I'm not too sure yet if that's happening this weekend, but if it is, I will do so. And then next week, hopefully, we'll get a full system test with my two tops and my two bins, which is really what I did build this for. So this has been a fun first part. We've got a crossover. It's finally complete. Um, but stay tuned because there's lots more to come. So it is Monday guys, the weekend has passed and as you guys can see I have made a nice bit of progress. We now have these big lovely chunky handles in the back of these speakers and they're not going anywhere. Um, they fitted in really nice with a tiny bit of clearance between this and um, the port on the inside, the port tube. and. Um, a massive thanks to my dad. He just cut these in while I was in work and stuff. And um, yeah, it's a great job. It's identical on both speakers. The other one's downstairs. I just brought this one up to show you guys. Um, he ended up taking pretty much everything out of the cabinet. Uh, the crossover board in the back, the input output board, and the tweeter and the woofer. And also, that's not the only thing we've done. If I can show you this kind of effectively, if I tip this back, this is such a heavy cabinet, guys. We also have... If I can just place that down on there, we have rubber feet on the bottom. So as you guys can see, that's absolutely lovely. So the speaker is now much better finished and much easier to transport and it also feels okay when you stand it on its end and stuff. So it's now converted from an install speaker to a portable PA speaker, which is great. So live on camera, what I'm gonna do is rip that off and there's a lovely shine to the handle. Now you guys might be thinking that I'm not sounding too thrilled and I'm absolutely so grateful for the work that my dad has done and everything and I'm so happy this couldn't have turned out any better. This turned out a lot better than I thought it would. However, we've got a little bit of bad news in terms of my PA system. Um, now there's two sets of bad news but there's also a bit of good news as well. Now the first first bit of bad news is about these speakers, but it's not really catastrophic at all. Unfortunately, when we took these apart, I looked at the woofer, and this, it was my first time taking them apart. I bought these speakers secondhand. I was told that they had the original woofers in them, but unfortunately they have been changed. They've both been changed. So that's one good thing. They've both been changed so they don't have um, odd woofers in them. They're both the same. However, they are 300 watt RMS woofers. So this cabinet, depending on the power of the tweeter, has um, probably about 350 watts of power, which is 100 watts more than I thought it had. So my amp could be underpowering them, um, but I'm not sure about impedances and stuff, so I'm gonna have to do some proper testing. Also, I'm a little bit annoyed, well, I'm not annoyed, but it's a bit of a shame. The woofer that's in these, the speaker driver itself, is of lower quality than the one that should be in here. The one that should be in here is, is quite a bit of a better quality speaker. But it's all about your ears. Um, I'm annoyed, but they sound good to me, especially when they're crossed over. They do sound great to me, and once I get them with the subs, I really have a feeling that these cabinets are gonna wail. Um, and it's not too much of a bother anyway, because I think they'll be fine for now. And also, if they aren't, then I'd be quite happy using them as monitors, and I'll get new front of house speakers if it comes to it. But no, I think these are gonna be great. I really do. I was a bit shocked to see that cheaper model woofer in there. Um, it's, it is a bit of a shame, but it's no massive deal. So again, so pleased with the work my dad's done. I'm just ever so grateful. He's, he's great. Anything I, it, I just ask him to do it and, and he does it straight away. Um, I'm really sorry guys, I got a cold in the background. But anyway, the second bit of bad news is not related to the speaker. You guys may notice that I don't have my amp rack here. And that's because I took my amp rack to a gig on Friday night. And I did mention this previously in the video that I was going to use maybe the NU3000 for stage monitors. Now, I have good news and bad news. The good news is the amp worked flawlessly all night, remained stone cold to the touch, 
and performed amazingly. I was using a pair of Sherman Audio 12 inch wedges and they can really suck up some juice and my god I have, well, I've, they're normally powered with a PV900 amp which is underpowered for them anyway um, but my god they sounded so good with the Behringer so I was so pleased with that amp and there is nothing wrong with it it didn't blow up it performed cold all night it was absolutely fantastic however guys we do have a problem with the rack itself now unfortunately when we arrived at the venue the power kept tripping in and out um, so we were turning things on and off, seeing if the power was on, and it was all a bit complicated and it was a bit of a rush. And the guy that I'm working with, he's a great guy, but he can sometimes be in a bit of a rush. So unfortunately the power was tripped back on when the main switch on the back of the rack was on the on position and he'd actually turned both amplifiers on, because he, he wasn't aware that we were only using the top one, he turned both amplifiers on when the power was out. So obviously when the power came back on, when they tripped the power back on, the, the force of that NU6000, the NU3000 and the cross, crossover starting up all at the same time was enough to blow the back panel. So the switch in the six-way um, rack mount has actually gone, it, it went poof. Um, and I double checked, I changed the fuse in the 13 amp um, socket and the reason I know that it's the six way is because it's actually happened before it happened when I had a QSC GX5 and that Mackie amp I may have been talking about in a previous um, previous video when both of those were on that circuit and it was switched on same thing happened both amps were switched on it just the, the, the power strip can't deal with that rush of power now I did in fact um, take a closer look at the power strip and it is rated up to 16 amps at 230 or uh, 240 volt. So 16 amps it does do, which is great news, but you need to stagger the amplifiers when you turn them on, obviously. Even these Class D ones, they suck so much juice when they're initially booting up. So I was so annoyed so so annoyed um, and I was a bit annoyed also at the person that I was setting up with because he was sort of rushing into things and pressing buttons and it was it was a pain you know we weren't even ready to turn the amps on he was just using the amplifiers to test the circuit um you know so i was a bit bummed out by that but i'm not annoyed at him personally because he's such a great guy and he gets me loads and loads of gigs and i really appreciate it and he's just a legend to be honest um but yeah, in terms of rushing, setting up, rushing is never a good idea, especially when you're working with equipment that can suck quite a bit of juice. So what did I do? I ended up screwing the six, unscrewing the six-way and using a standard four-way extension lead, just hanging in the back of the rack, powering the crossover, obviously to get signal to the amp, powering the amp, and uh, that was pretty much it. So at the moment, I don't know what the patch panel stands like. The patch panel should be fine. I should be able to change the switch in the six-way or change the entire six-way. Um, and yeah, I would be doing that today, but that's where the next bit of the bad news comes in. My amp rack is still in Cardiff, which is, I don't know, um, about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes away from me. So that's going to be dropped off to me tomorrow when all the gear is collected. So in theory, it's not going so well at the moment, but my speaker cabinets are looking great. And tomorrow should be the day that I can work on my amp rack to get it all powered up nicely again. I'm so glad that the power didn't damage either of my amplifiers. At least I don't think it did. I hope it didn't. Um, but only time will tell. I have a gig this Friday and I will be documenting the um, process. But yeah, I took a tiny bit of footage of the NU3000 in action on monitors. But it's, it was only with an acoustic gig. So... Um, yeah, there's not much, but I will input that clip now. But um, after that clip, the next time I will see you will probably be tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed the clip, guys. I can't remember if I showed you this in the last clip or not, but I have two remaining feet because these are trapezoid cabinets. We use three and not four on each speaker. And also, check this out. This is the um, this is the wood. This is so heavy. And um, this is the thickness of the cabinet. So it's quite a nice cabinet. I thought I'd save this just to show you guys. But yeah, check that out. That is definitely a lump. Um, so yeah, that's just a little extra because I forgot to show you. Um, expect more footage later on in the week with testing and whatnot. So I'm sorry about the different camera everyone, this one hasn't got image stabilisation so it'll look a bit, um, the footage will look a bit rougher probably. But I'm here in a different location, I'm in my girlfriend's living room.
living room at the moment and I'm just testing out the sound system and I've got all of it together. Now as you guys know, I'm not sure if you will see this, um, basically the power supply went, like I said in my last video, so I'm just using a standard four-way for now, but I will be repairing this ASAP. Um, I'll probably have to replace it with a new six-way because the switch is burnt out and there's not a lot I can do about that. Um, but yeah, this is my first time testing um, both subs and both tops, so it's really, really exciting, you know, with these amps. Um, these are my subs, by the way, guys. These are the first. This is the first time you've seen them. So they are indeed Sherman Audio 15-inch subs. As you can tell, they're really nice cabs. They're actually quite small for a 15-inch sub, um, but obviously they're still big speakers. They've got nice casters on the back. Um, also. You can't see much back there, but they've got a handle on the back as well as on the top here. They've got skids on the bottom and they've got nice handles on the side. Um, so yeah, I've got two of those. They're really, really nice subs and I'm very impressed with them. Something else that I'm really impressed with is the crossover. The crossover is actually sounding so, so nice. Obviously, I can't really tell in this living room at the moment, but Friday I'll be able to get these into an actual... Um, like a venue like pub club type place because i'm doing a little party there um so it'll be a good excuse to run out the system um it's not like a band or anything it's just a, a playback gig you may notice the speakers are different heights that's just because i'm experimenting with my um I, you can't see anything on this bloody camera um i'm experimenting with my speaker pole so this is on height number two which is how i'm going to have it for the party and then this is height number one which is handy for a smaller room but yeah, I'm very impressed. So you guys won't be able to hear much on camera and I can't hardly push it at all because of the neighbours. These walls are so thin. Um, but I'll play some Ronald Jenkins again and I won't be pushing it hardly at all. You guys probably won't even see it registering on the amp for the tops. You'll probably see a little tickle on the bins, but nothing much. Um, what's really cool is even when this amp is in mono mode, like I was explaining to you guys, obviously you just use this switch now, this uh, dial, sorry, but both meters actually work for each individual output, which is still really cool. Um, and the crossover works really nicely. Like I said, it sounds gorgeous and uh, I, won't, I won't be changing it out for the DBX unit. There are further issues with the delivery of that unit, which is so annoying. Um, but yeah, this will definitely probably be it for part three, guys. I'm gonna do a part four, which is gonna be a lot shorter, but it may be in a few weeks time because um, I'll have to give you guys an update on changing the power supply and also how the system actually performs when it, you know, is doing its proper job and I haven't really got anything booked in for a while. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased. Um, the project's gone well. I'm so gutted about the power supply thing. As you guys can see, I'm not using the power con power cable, I'm just using a normal extension lead. Now there is a little bit of noise in the system, not sure if you can hear this. There's a little bit of a hiss there and there's also a little bit of a ground buzz in the subs. Um, but I believe it's probably just the power. It didn't sound like that at home. So it could be the power here or it could be the extension lead. It could be anything really. So um, it's only a process of elimination over time that will actually give me an answer to what that buzzing is. Um, but yeah, I'm going to queue up some Ronald Jenkins because it's copyright free. And uh, well, I don't think it is actually, but I never get strikes for it. So I'm going to queue some of that up and give you guys a listen. So everyone, I've just been editing the video that you've been watching. And unfortunately, I can't retrieve the last clip off my phone. In the last clip I actually tested the PA which is what the entire video series was uh, building up to. I, would te I was testing the PA. Um, you couldn't hear much on my phone camera anyway. My, f my phone camera is pretty crud actually. I mean the images look nice and crisp but uh, the stabilization is really crappy, the light is really crappy, the response to light is crappy and the microphone sucks um, in its own way. Um, so I was editing this video as you guys can see and I can't for the life of me retrieve the last clip It just messes up it'll only play on the phone and it won't play on anything else um, It's totally mangled I don't know what the hell is wrong with it And this has actually inspired me to look into buying a small point-and-shoot camera for vlogging um, That I can carry around in my bag at all times um, To save carrying this camcorder around but anyway what I'm going to do now is actually point my camera at my phone but I'm going to plug my phone into some speakers so you guys can hopefully hear the clip and it's so ghetto. 
I know it's absolutely awful, but it's the best I can do. So guys, I'm so sorry. This is the only way I can do this. I've got my phone plugged into my uh, my amp and it's coming through my Technic speaker here. The sound doesn't sound too bad. I'll just show you the testing and then all the rambling I do afterwards, I'll actually do in a real clip. So this is the only way I can do it. This is so embarrassing, but whatever. So I'm tickling over some Ronald Jenkies and if I turn it all the way up on the iPad, if I can actually get to the button, there we go, it's all the way up. And you guys can see how sensitive the controls on the mixer are. So I've got the channel up halfway, and the master is so sensitive, it's unreal. Now I know the microphone on this phone is on the front, closest my mouth um, is on the back rather than where the screen is. But I just, it's so hard to push it in here. So if we take the subs out, just listen to the crossover tops. Give the tops full range. That's just the tops. They do sound pretty horrendous without subs. Even at full range. Cross them over. They're nice and clear though, that's a good thing about them. And bring in the subs. And then let's take out tops and listen to just subs. And it just shakes the room, everything's just shaking. Bring in tops. So you guys get the idea. Unfortunately, uh, my phone has been a complete and utter waste of time um, and not doing anything that I want it to do. I'm so sorry about all that and you probably couldn't hear very much at all, but uh, whatever. So that was one of the more interesting things I've done on the channel for a while. Um, but basically the rambling at the end of that video included me saying that there will be a bonus part four. Now the part four will just show you um, the fact that I fixed the power supply and hopefully show various clips of the sound system in action at either one or two or possibly three gigs, but probably just one. Um, now, I can't guarantee this at all. I can't guarantee that it'll come, and it'll probably come in a couple of weeks' time. I'm not even sure. Um, but yeah, it'll all be, it'll all become clear soon. Part four will be a bonus thing. It, it won't be, you know, as long as these or whatever, just the odd clips here and there. But I'll make sure anything I'll do with the PA, I'll take my camcorder with me so I don't have any struggles with the phone. Um, sometimes I think the, my phone clips mess up for some reason if there's been really high input volume. Um, it, I, I was pushing the hell out of that PA, but obviously you can't, um, well I wasn't really, it was just tickling over, but I was pushing it considering I was in the living room and recording with my phone, so that really isn't coming through um, through the two cameras, but whatever guys, rambling aside, um, the end of this video has been a bit of a disaster, but hopefully you still get the right idea. Uh, part 4 bonus will definitely be coming now that I had problems with that footage, so keep your eyes peeled, stay tuned, and as always, huge thank you to everyone that stayed with me through this video series. It's been so fun. Please give me a like if you enjoyed this video. It really does help me out and it allows me to make more and more all the time. Other than that, everyone, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all soon.